Up next, the rebirth of an Art Deco theater in Silver Spring. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Barbara Grunbaum, producer of Paths to the Present, standing in today for Gale Street. Today's show focuses entirely on how old buildings enhance our modern lives. In 2003, the AFI Silver Theater and Cultural Center reopened in Silver Spring, paving the way for that community's renaissance. On a smaller scale, in 2008, the community of Barnesville celebrated the restoration of its 1925 town hall. This show takes a look at both, but first, it's time for the history quiz. Do you know who this is? From 1909 until his untimely death 50 years later, this man dedicated his life to healing his patients, neighbors, and friends in the community of Sandy Spring. He's credited with many things, most notably starting the first acute care hospital in Montgomery County. Think you know who this is? Stay tuned. I'll give you the answer at the end of the show. The town of Barnesville sits about 35 miles northwest of Washington, D.C., in the shadow of Sugarloaf Mountain. Founded in 1747, it grew quickly, serving the surrounding farmers. Today, Barnesville has retained much of its small town charm. In the summer of 2008, many of its nearly 200 residents came together to rededicate a building that's significant to them all. Welcome to the Barnesville Town Hall. You can find it along Barnesville Road, the town's main street. The building has a long history here, but it's been decades since it was used as a municipal building. Pete Menke, mayor of Barnesville, explains. The uh, town hall here was built back in 1925, and it was built as a town hall. Uh, it remained a town hall for a number of years, and for some reason, and no records indicate why, uh, they turned it over uh, to the public. Uh, after that, it uh, was in the hands of both the Lions Club, and then later became a private residence. Uh, the Baptist minister had passed away, and his wife had moved over here, and it was occupied as a home. And then we went for 20 years, basically, without anyone living here. Uh, that's when we took the project in hand. When the town acquired it, the exterior hadn't been painted in over 20 years. Shrubs had overgrown it, and it was an eyesore. And inside was even worse. Uh, when we came in, it was divided as a house, divided up. So there were rooms, second floor, uh, trash piled up, uh, old beds, couches, everything. We hauled dump, dumpster load after dumpster load out of here and then began the arduous process of cleaning it up and making it into what it is. To get from this to this took a lot of hard work as well as a clear vision of the end product. Once we established that the, the building was restorable, we wanted to take it back to the way that it was in 1925. Fortunately, uh, a lot of the original materials were here and were restorable. Uh, we have original uh, chestnut floors. We have chestnut wainscoting, which you can't even get chestnut anymore. The, there's a unique design in the ceiling that is all part of the original look that was in the town hall, and we have records that show this type of thing. So our goal was to, to get it back to, the, to its glory, and the first step, of course, is cleaning it out, and then started with the windows, and then we went with uh, heating and, and getting permission to put a septic system in, water, all those sorts of things. We had to have uh, restrooms, and of course, we did all new electric, all new wallboard, all that sort of business. For nearly 85 years, town business was conducted in private homes. But July 12, 2008, was the beginning of a new era in Barnesville. Town residents, along with area politicians, came together to celebrate this community's new home. So far, everyone's given it the thumbs up. They love it. 
They love it. And I think all of us are really excited about having a place of our own, a place to keep our records. My wife loves it because now we can actually move all the town records out of our house and uh, put them here. So it's been a great project. Our next segment is another success story, but this is not just the story of saving a building. It can be said that this one saved a community. The AFI Silver Theater and Cultural Center celebrated its opening night on April 4th, 2003. 65 years earlier, the Silver opened for the first time. Back then, like today, this theater had much to do with the development of Silver Spring. The Silver Theater opened September 15, 1938, with four daughters, starring John Garfield and Claude Rains. It was developed alongside the Silver Spring Shopping Center, this county's first automobile-oriented shopping strip mall. At the time, Silver Spring was one of the fastest growing areas in the region, and this combination entertainment and commercial complex became the centerpiece of its business development. John Eberson, renowned theater architect, designed both structures in a style which today is described as streamlined modern. Eberson chose a nautical theme for the theater. When viewed from above, its shape mimics the lines of a ship. And throughout the building, decorative touches continue this maritime motif. For years, people flocked to see the latest releases in this 1,100-seat auditorium. The Silver Theater was a very, very successful theater over the years and was really uh, integral to this community. And, and if you talk to anybody uh, who was around in the 30s, 40s, or 50s, you'll, you'll, you'll see they're great, greatly attached to it. It was really central to it. That's Ray Berry. He first got involved with the theater's restoration project in 1997. Now he's the director of the AFI Silver Theater and Cultural Center. As time went on, uh, the commercial environment around here changed quite dramatically. The, um, the concept of the shopping mall was created and you know Wheaton Plaza north of here was opened and uh, that had a great impact in the commercial activity here as well as in the 70s the, the uh, theater business changed dramatically and uh, the notion of a standalone thousand seat movie theater just simply wasn't a business model that existed anymore and you saw the start of the multiplex and the multi-screen theaters. So uh, you know the, the net impact of all of that was that the theater really came on some hard times. Unable to continue, the theater was shuttered in 1985. In an effort to block historic designation, its owner, KB Theater, had begun removing parts of the building. In a matter of days, the signature marquee, glass trim, and decorative portholes were gone. This sparked a more than 10-year struggle among concerned citizens to save the Silver Theater. Meanwhile, efforts to revitalize downtown Silver Spring met with many false starts. A central concern was, what would happen to the silver? Three county executives later, a plan was finally hatched in 1998 that everyone could live with. That's when the AFI signed on to move here from the Kennedy Center, and the hard work of rebuilding began. I remember when I first walked in here, uh, the condition was extraordinary. There was piles of seats around, rubble everywhere, water, mold, dead animals, deflated basketballs, you name it. Um, it was really a very, very, very grim picture. Um, so we looked at it and it was, it was sort of, one, intimidating, but two, how would you take this and, and uh, respect the historic fabric, do the renovation, and yet make it a living place again, not just a recreation of a 1938 theater. Um, and serve the economic development purposes that really everyone was looking for as, we, as, as, as AFI anchoring the, this project. The five-year, multi-million dollar, county-funded project added two additional theaters, a cafe, as well as meeting and office space, all while breathing new life in the old Silver Theater. This was not a restoration, because an exact replica of the original could not accommodate a state-of-the-art 21st century theater. However, this rehabilitation comes pretty close. 
It was not easy to recreate this because all we had was black and white pictures and approximately 12 to 20 pages of original construction drawings. So, you know, those drawings might say turquoise and pink. What that really means is anybody's guess. Uh, so we had a lot of work. We had terrific historic architects. We had uh, uh, terrific construction people who really, really were dedicated to getting it right. So it, there's a lot that went into it, a lot of research. Um, we have a lot of authentic things here and some things that are our best guess. Um, carpeting's authentic. Wall colors for the murals are best guess. On April 4th, 2003, the Silver Theater was rededicated as the AFI Silver Theater and Cultural Center. Opening night was a pretty exciting event for, for not just us at AFI, I think for everyone in the county, for this community. Uh, you know, we had our formal ceremonial ribbon cutting and you know, standing out front with the cameras, with hundreds of people, with people on both sides of Colesville Road, with, uh, with our county executive, Doug Duncan, our CEO, Clint Eastwood, and everybody there. And uh, uh, it, was, it was the culmination of really five years of very, very hard work. And, and, and uh, uh, it was an experience I don't think I'll ever have again or anything like it. The theater is a work of art. I'm very, uh, very pleased to have had the opportunity to come here and see this restoration. Very exciting. And to, and to see your support for motion pictures. As he addressed the audience, Mr. Eastwood said what everyone was thinking. This theater was something special, a work of art in which to celebrate the art of film. Today, more than five years later, the AFI Silver Theater and Cultural Center is thriving. Not only does it show a diverse selection of classic and newly released films, it also reaches out to the community. Over 30,000 students have participated in the AFI Silver's extensive school program. Screenings, like an annual Martin Luther King documentary or the recent presidential inauguration, are free and open to the public. And each year, the AFI Silver Theater is home to a significant event that has put Silver Spring on the map. Our biggest annual event that we, we, we've created for, literally from scratch is Silver Docs AFI Discovery Channel Documentary Festival. Um, it obviously represents an extraordinary collaboration with uh, our Discovery Communications, our neighbor. Uh, from out of nowhere, we really have created what is the preeminent documentary festival in the United States and clearly one of the two or three top documentary events in the world. It is an event that really, I think, has put Silver Spring on the map in a way that uh, is almost unimaginable. Nowadays, it is impossible to think of Silver Spring without the AFI Silver Theater and Cultural Center. As this district's council member, Valerie Irvin, says, it's the heart of this community's revitalization. I don't think people really understood how important uh, the restoration of AFI Silver was until it was done, and then it became a magnet. And so for many people who could walk to the theater, and uh, see movies in this spectacular uh, surrounding. It really has helped to revitalize that community. People go and they go to a restaurant, they have dinner, then they go to the theater. So the renaissance of Silver Spring to me is all about AFI Silver. Okay, time's up. Did you figure out who this is? Beginning in 1909, Dr. Jacob Bird gave 50 years of country doctor service to the community of Sandy Spring. In 1920, during the height of a flu epidemic, he founded Montgomery General Hospital. It opened with 28 beds and has grown to more than five times that size. Dr. Bird died unexpectedly in a car accident, only three months after celebrating his golden anniversary of service to Sandy Spring. Well, that's all the time we have for this show. If you have comments for us or ideas for future shows, send an email to paths.present at verizon.net. Be sure and tune in again next time as we follow more Paths to the Present. See you then.